and playwrights from all over the world were asked to write short plays, 10-minute plays, dealing with human rights issues in Belarus. And as an ensemble, make decisions that a literary manager would make at a theater, which is decide which plays are important for us to do for this audience at Bennington and are interesting for us politically, also theatrically, and what we could pull off. And having these discussions, which is very unusual, that it really is generally a, a small group of people do it, and those are not the people who perform. So what is unusual about the process is that the process itself is very democratic, and being able to articulate your ideas, listen to other people's ideas, not railroad people, not, you know, it, the whole process has been very interesting. You arrested me for clapping. After I ended up having class with Susan Scarbati, which is solving the impossible, solving the intractable conflicts, I somehow wanted to change my plan and in the in like being having a, a bit of that conflict resolution part of it in it. So I ended up choosing Belarusian Dream because it dealt it, it's dealing with human rights and performance, and I thought that was a great combination for me to to, to kind of start and dive into that. That, that kind of theater. Because it was happening during the inauguration, a lot of uh, people from outside the college came here. And as we had discussions after the plays and performances, uh, we, we kind of, it was kind of obvious that, 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 that we made a big impact. If not an impact, then we raised a huge question in, in people's heads. I think right away, I, it just came as the idea of Wizard of Oz and uh, trying to find my grandmother's roots. Having written a first draft, then I brought in um, like an, another Bennington connection. I turned to Jesse Johnson Cunningham, who recently graduated. Her plan was involved in psychology and in playwriting and she wants to work with people involved in trauma. But I brought my first draft to Jesse. And we switched roles, so Jesse became the mentor and I became the mentee. Should I do this? Can I say this? What should I do? And in, in some cases, some of the notes that I wrote, Jesse said, just have your character say it. So she was very helpful, uh, a mentor for, for me as the budding playwright. And in the process of this, I ended up contacting um, a Romanian student who's a playwright and a graduate of Bennington. And we're doing one of his plays in this upcoming called Children Don't Cry, which is actually, it's not about Belarus, it's about Romania under Ceausescu. It's a fabulous play and we're, on the students are very excited about it. So we found in the course that we could, as people do in the real world, we could make our own parameters. We could make what's exciting for us. Christian Panaita was uh, is a Bennington alum uh, who wrote one of the plays, uh, The Children Don't Cry. It wasn't necessarily uh, a Belarusian play, but it had a lot to do with what was going on, not only in Belarus, but also in Romania and other parts of the world. So in that way, we uh, Bel we made Belarusian dream a world dream, you know. We are doing the Belarusian dream, but we could also do another play from Eastern Europe that gives an another perspective on it. The people who are interested in it were, it's very interesting, social science people, um, freshmen, you know, <laughs> people who are interested in human rights. One of the things that was really interesting is that there were people who joined the project uh, who were not uh, originally with it. So after seeing, I think, the, after the first set of events, the, there were people who then wanted to become part of it and joined. And then one student who is from Moldova spoke at the first talk back about how she had been uh, working for UNESCO in Belarus and was pelted uh, with potatoes. She was so interested in the plays and what she had seen that she then uh, participated, one of the, uh, the actors in the, the last set of plays. You're crafting your own way. There's not a certain thing that you must do with theater. I experienced that beauty of it here as combining it with conflict resolution, whereas I would not be able to do that anywhere else, especially if I did it in the conservatory. 
And I think that question of theater, uh, of question, question of why we do theater is really important, not only here, but like uh, overall. So that purpose is uh, literally to raise the awareness uh, of what's going on in the world today. What kind of uh, human rights violations are there in the world today? And how can we use theater to raise the awareness? And it was the Belarusian dream was perfect example of that. And I can surely say it's the it's only the beginning of, of, of it all. It was another one of those examples to show how powerful theater can be, how threatening theater can be, and uh, in some countries how dangerous it can be just to be putting on a play. There's something very powerful about theater. I think the connection that the audience has with what's going on on the stage in real time you can get mired in looking at your own situation. Could be your life becomes clearer because you're seeing it in somebody else. Which is also, I think, part of if you're using theater for peace, reconciliation, and social justice to make people aware of things. It's a great project because it, theater's fun. Um, I mean, and even if you're doing a, a scene like a prison riot, I, people have a lot of fun. <laughs>